welcome to this session. In this session, let us discuss some properties of inverse trigonometric functions. Now we know that if sine theta is equal to x, then theta is equal to sine inverse x. Thus, we can see that sine inverse x is a symbol which denotes an angle or a number, the value of whose sine is x. So the expressions sine inverse x, then cos inverse x, tan inverse x, and so on are called inverse trigonometric functions. And now let us discuss some of the properties of inverse trigonometric functions. First of all, let us discuss the conversion property. And the first conversion property is sine inverse hex is equal to cos inverse of square root of 1 minus x square which is further equal to tan inverse of x over square root of 1 minus x square the whole which is further equal to secant inverse of 1 upon square root of 1 minus x square the whole which is further equal to cos inverse of square root of 1 minus x square all upon x the whole which is further equal to cosecant inverse 1 by x. Now let us start with its proof. Let sine inverse x is equal to theta which implies sine theta is equal to x. Now, we know one of the trigonometric identities which is sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 and from that we have cos theta is equal to square root of 1 minus sine square theta which further implies cos theta is equal to square root of 1 minus now putting the value of sine theta, it will be square root of 1 minus x square. And this further implies theta is equal to cos inverse of square root of 1 minus x square. Now theta is equal to sine inverse x. And here this is the value of theta. This means sine inverse x is equal to cos inverse of square root of 1 minus x square. Now tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta which is further equal to now we have taken sine theta as x and we are getting cos theta as square root of 1 minus x square which implies theta is equal to tan inverse of x over square root of 1 minus x square the whole now we know that secant theta is equal to 1 over cos theta which is further equal to 1 over now cos theta is square root of 1 minus x square so this implies theta is equal to secant inverse 1 over square root of 1 minus x square also we know that cot theta is equal to 1 upon tan theta now here we are getting tan theta is equal to x over square root of 1 minus x square. So cot theta will be equal to, now putting the value of tan theta, it will be square root of 1 minus x square all upon x, which further implies theta is equal to 
cos inverse of square root of 1 minus x square whole upon x the whole. Now we have sine theta is equal to x. Now cosecant theta is equal to 1 upon sine theta which implies cosecant theta will be equal to 1 by x which further implies theta is equal to cosecant inverse 1 by x. Now these are the different values which we are getting for theta and from all these values we are getting this result that is all these are the values of theta that means we have proved the first property. Similarly, we have two more conversion properties and the second one is cos inverse x is equal to sin inverse square root of 1 minus x square is equal to tan inverse of square root of 1 minus x square over x the whole is equal to cosecant inverse of 1 over square root of 1 minus x square the whole is equal to cot inverse of x over square root of 1 minus x square the whole is equal to secant inverse of 1 over x the whole. And the third property is tan inverse x is equal to sine inverse of x over square root of 1 plus x square the whole is equal to cos inverse of 1 over square root of 1 plus x square the whole is equal to cosecant inverse of square root of 1 plus x square whole upon x the whole is equal to secant inverse of square root of 1 plus x square the whole is equal to odd inverse of 1 over x the whole. Now as we have proved the first property Similarly, we can prove these two properties also. Now let us discuss the next property of inverse trigonometric functions and its first subpart is 2 sine inverse x is equal to sine inverse of 2x into square root of 1 minus x square the whole. Now let us start with its proof. Now let sine inverse x is equal to theta which implies x is equal to sine theta. Therefore sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta which is further equal to now sine theta is x so it is 2 into x and cos theta is equal to square root of 1 minus sine square theta now sine theta is x so it will be square root of 1 minus x square now we have got the value of sine 2 theta which further implies 2 theta is equal to sine inverse of 2x into square root of 1 minus x square the whole which further implies now theta is equal to sine inverse x so it will be 2 sine inverse x is equal to sine inverse of 2x into square root of 1 minus x square the whole hence we have proved this property now the second sub property is 2 cos inverse x is equal to cos inverse of 2x square minus 1 the whole. Now let us prove this. Let cos inverse x is equal to theta which implies x is equal to cos theta. Now 
cos 2 theta is equal to 2 cos square theta minus 1 which is equal to now cos theta is x so it will be 2x square minus 1 which further implies 2 theta is equal to cos inverse of 2x square minus 1 the whole which implies now theta is equal to cos inverse x so it will be 2 cos inverse x is equal to cos inverse of 2x square minus 1 the whole. Now the next property is 3 sin inverse x is equal to sin inverse of 3x minus 4x cubed the whole. Now let us start with its proof. Let sin inverse x is equal to theta which implies x is equal to sin theta. Now sin 3 theta is equal to 3 sin theta minus 4 sin cube theta which implies sin 3 theta is equal to now sin theta is x so it is 3x minus 4x cube which further implies 3 theta that is 3 and theta is sin inverse x is equal to sin inverse of 3x minus 4x cube the whole. Now let us prove the next property which is 3 cos inverse x is equal to cos inverse of 4x cube minus 3x the whole. Now let us start with its proof. Now here we know that cos 3 theta is equal to 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta which further implies cos 3 theta is equal to 4. Now cos theta we have taken as x. So this is equal to 4 into x cube minus 3x which further implies 3 theta that is 3 and theta is cos inverse x. So it is 3 cos inverse x is equal to cos inverse of 4x cube minus 3x the whole. Now let us prove the next property which is 3 tan inverse x is equal to tan inverse of 3x minus x cube whole upon 1 minus 3x square the whole. Now let us start with its proof. Now let tan inverse x is equal to theta which implies x is equal to tan theta. Now we know that tan 3 theta is equal to 3 tan theta minus tan cube theta whole upon 1 minus 3 tan square theta. Now putting the value of tan theta this implies tan 3 theta is equal to 3x minus x cube whole upon 1 minus 3x square which further implies 3 theta now theta is tan inverse x so it will be 3 tan inverse x is equal to tan inverse of 3x minus x cube whole upon 1 minus 3x square the whole now let us discuss the next property and its first subpart is sin inverse x plus minus sin inverse y is equal to sin inverse of x into square root of 1 minus y square plus minus y into square root of 1 minus x square the whole if x y is greater than or equal to 0 and x square plus y square is less than or equal to 1. Now let us start with this proof. Let sine inverse x is equal to alpha and sine inverse y is equal to beta and this implies sine alpha is equal to x and sine beta is equal to y. Now, sine of alpha plus 
plus minus beta the whole is equal to sine alpha cos beta plus minus cos alpha sine beta. Now here we are expressing this property in terms of sine inverse. So here we will change cos beta and cos alpha in terms of sine. That is we will express cos beta and cos alpha in terms of sine so that we can get this result. Now this will be equal to sine alpha. Now we know that by the trigonometrical identity that sine square beta plus cos square beta is equal to 1. Therefore cos beta is equal to square root of 1 minus sine square beta plus minus and similarly cos alpha will be equal to square root of 1 minus sine square alpha into sine beta. Now putting the values of sine alpha and sine beta, this implies sine of alpha plus minus beta the whole is equal to x into square root of 1 minus y square plus minus square root of 1 minus x square into y. Now this further implies alpha plus of minus beta. Now putting the values of alpha and beta, we get sine inverse x plus minus sine inverse y is equal to sine inverse of x into square root of 1 minus y square plus minus y into square root of 1 minus x square the whole. So we have proved this property. Now the next property is sine inverse x plus minus sine inverse y is equal to pi minus sine inverse of x into square root of 1 minus y square plus minus y into square root of 1 minus x square the whole if x, y are greater than equal to 0 and x square plus y square is greater than 1. Now let us start with this proof. Now if x is greater than 0, y is greater than 0 and x square plus y square is greater than 1, then sine inverse x plus sine inverse y median angle more than pi by 2 while sine inverse of x into square root of 1 minus y square plus minus y into square root of 1 minus x square the whole is an angle between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. Now by these conditions we are getting sine inverse x plus sine inverse y between an angle more than pi by 2 and the value of this as an angle between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. Therefore, by these results, we conclude that sine inverse x plus minus sine inverse y is equal to pi minus sine inverse of x into square root of 1 minus y square plus minus y into square root of 1 minus x square the whole. 
Now let us discuss the next property which is cos inverse x plus minus cos inverse y is equal to cos inverse of xy minus plus square root of 1 minus x square into square root of 1 minus y square the whole if xy are greater than 0 and x square plus y square is less than equal to 1. Now let us start with its proof. Now let cos inverse x is equal to alpha and cos inverse y is equal to beta which implies x is equal to cos alpha and y is equal to cos beta. Now by using the formula cos of alpha plus minus beta the whole is equal to cos alpha cos beta minus plus sin alpha sin beta. Now this implies cos of alpha plus minus beta the whole is equal to cos alpha into cos beta minus plus now using the trigonometrical identity sin alpha will be equal to square root of 1 minus cos square alpha into sin beta will be equal to square root of 1 minus cos square beta. Now this further implies cos of alpha plus minus beta the whole is equal to now cos alpha is equal to x and cos beta is equal to y therefore this will be x into y minus plus square root of 1 minus x square into square root of 1 minus y square. Now this further implies now alpha is equal to cos inverse x and beta is equal to cos inverse y. So alpha plus minus beta will be cos inverse x plus minus cos inverse y which is equal to cos inverse of xy minus plus square root of 1 minus x square into square root of 1 minus y square the whole. So we have proved the property. Now the next property is cos inverse x plus minus cos inverse y is equal to pi minus cos inverse of xy minus plus square root of 1 minus x square into square root of 1 minus y square the whole if xy are greater than 0 and x square plus y square is greater than 1. Now earlier we have proved the property for sin inverse x plus minus sin inverse y that is this property. In the same manner we can prove this property also. So in this session we have learnt about some properties of inverse trigonometric functions. And this completes our session. Hope you all have enjoyed the session.